Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. Hey there. I'm Nathan Simmons. I am so afraid about what's about to happen. <laughs> and I'm sorry. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist. A podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. Oof. I am so, Mally, I am so sorry. I have to apologize to you specifically because this feels like punishment Yeah, for making you do an episode on Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom because what the fuck? That's exactly <laughs> what it was supposed to be, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Oh. I was coming. I picked a revenge movie as a revenge for fucking Ooh, oh Fallen Kingdom. God. It was all a part of my master plan, and I'm <laughs> so happy it has panned out exactly how I wanted it to. You're happy? Here, here, are, my, here are my two, like, capital letter notes. Mm -hmm. One, um, I fucking hated this movie. Yeah, same. <laughs> two, Mally has done the impossible where he is... <laughs> given us two films this season already where Robert De Niro is wasted, <laughs> where we don't get nearly enough De Niro. That's an incredible feat. I love it when a plan comes together, guys. That, that's an incredible feat to you, that you have pulled off. And it's also incredible that we're only like 60 seconds, yeah. two minutes into this episode, and boy, sure. <laughs> the energy level has just plummeted already. Oh, oh it's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> Uh, listeners, this is your first time tuning in. I promise you they're not all this dour right off the top. But right. if you're a returning uh, guest to the show, first of all, thank you for coming back. Yeah. Um, we are dipping, I don't want to say in quality, but we are dipping in enthusiasm from last week's episode, although misplaced because, yeah. boy, we ripped that movie apart with Jurassic World fallen kingdom but this one some movies are, i mean some movies require more of a, a a dour energy anyway i mean they can't all be you know gonzo bananas mm -hmm. you know nicholas cage knock, screaming crank, the sky Mandy. right <laughs> right you know the 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 concept of the podcast you know kind of dictates that every once in a while we have to just watch a fucking bummer not even a bummer a boring bummer yeah but Imagine this movie, but with Nicolas Cage replacing literally any role. Oh, if he replaced uh, Dustin Hoffman, oh, better movie. Oh, better movie. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. This movie, uh, and we'll get into it. This movie is, I, I texted you earlier, is filled with great actors doing some nothing. baffling work. Doing nothing. Yeah. There is nothing happening. I mean, they're, they're working off a rough script. A very rough script, <laughs> and a story based on a novel that is uh, dubious at best, and I'm sure yeah. we'll get into that as well. Oh yes, we will. Oh and yeah, we gotta talk about it. Nathan, you mentioned your capital letter note. Mine is <laughs> this movie is basically nothing. Yeah. There's about five minutes of story, mm -hmm. and then it's just dragging its feet as if it's trying to say something profound, right? And it does not. So. Mally, this was your pick. Why don't you, first of all, if the audience is included in yet, what episode, what movie are we talking about this week on Oh, show? ladies and gentlemen, we talk about Sleepers 96. Sleepers 96. And what an apt title, because oh, Jesus man. Christ. Guys, uh, audience, I will apologize. You're going to hear some drilling in the background, because they're doing construction at my apartment on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. God Fucking yep! Mm, I wanted to make a joke so bad right there, but never mind. Actually, <laughs> Dust, Dustin and I hired them to disassemble your place because we had to watch this movie. <laughs> oh god damn it! I really want to make a joke. Well, it's so like you guys are reacting exactly how I hoped you would. This is diabolical because yeah. I chose this movie very specifically <laughs> to 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 upset us. Yes, because uh. and I'm not gonna lie. Dustin put Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom on the schedule. Yeah. And it upset me so much that I started <laughs> plotting my revenge. Oof. You know, listener, if you're not clued in, we've talked about this a little bit briefly on the show before, but we normally, before the season starts, mm -hmm. you know, I like to divide up the schedule where everyone gets an even amount of picks that they get to pick so it's fair. Mm -hmm. um, I usually like to pick mine right off the top just so I can do all the research ahead of time and get a little jump start. Yeah. Mally will sometimes go... Uh, the day before we record, pick his movies that we're going to do. Or in the case of life, pick the wrong movie. Pick the wrong movie. That, look. <laughs> <laughs> and so 
I see this movie on the schedule. That was that was an understandable mistake. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I see this movie on the schedule. I've never heard of Sleepers. I'm like, okay. And then yeah. he tells me the cast. I've like, oh, great cast. I've never, I can't believe I've never heard of this it's movie. It's an excellent cast. It's yeah. a great cast. And then, you know, I put this movie on. And the first thing is, I one of my first notes is, I'm like, oh, this is a VO movie. This is a movie with voiceover. And I'm just like, fuck. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Maybe the worst VO since Blade Runner. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> and, and like... It, it, especially in the first 20 minutes in the last 10 this movie is like what if goodfellas yes like i wrote tackled, that down too tackled way heavier themes with none of the nuance and subtlety none of the this movie does not know what the words deft hand no mean <laughs> everything is there's everything is text in this movie there's no fucking all subtext te all tell no sh or all it's all show and tale yeah. simultaneously. <laughs> no, this movie grabs you by the shoulders and screams at you the whole time. But it screams at you. I, I forgot who says it, but somebody who's like wearing a turtleneck was like having a little person slowly strangle you all day. Like, oh, that's sure. what it feels like. <laughs> that's what this movie well, is. This movie it's someone grabbing you by the shoulders and screaming at you, yeah. but like in the most boring way possible. No, they're screaming, but then <laughs> yawning in the yeah. middle of their scream. Just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they fall asleep like, right? yeah what an aptly named movie by the way yes oh put me the fuck know, to sleep right? no this this took me like i think four sittings to finish the movie because by the way <laughs> it's two hours and 27 minutes Over long two hours yes that that was the biggest selling point for <sighs> me adding it i think longer than star wars if i'm not mistaken yeah. <laughs> i was I was like debating. I was like, ah, oh, like I know, like I was like, I don't know how Nathan's gonna react. I was like, I know Dustin's gonna hate this movie. Oh, and be so, so mad well. about having to watch it. This was the, like, I think this movie was longer than Black Panther. Oof. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oof. It, it's it's as long as Infinity War and Endgame because I had to take an intermission. That's right. Halfway through. <laughs> A year long intermission. Yeah. A few episodes ago, I still had this empty spot, and that it was a few episodes ago when Dustin really started going off about two hour movies. Oh, God damn it. And I was like, oh, yep, that's the selling right. point. Because I, I had a small list but of Mally, a few movies I was debating, yeah. and I wasn't sure which to pick. And then once Dustin started going off the two hour thing, I was like, and it's sleepers. I'm not going to reveal the rest of the list because they might still pop up Ugh. this season. God, God damn it. But Mally, that means you had to like watch it. Like that'd be like me getting mad at the bartending segment so I drink myself to death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I go ahead uh go ahead and clue you guys in on my drink for the movie so we can get that out of the way. Yeah. Uh it's ever clear on the rocks because I want to be fucking blackout drunk if I ever have Jesus to watch this movie Christ. again. Yeah, no, I, this <laughs> oh will my not fucking be fucking god. Yeah, I'm jumping ahead. This will not be one that I revisit ever no, but no never gonna watch this movie again deleting it from my hard drive <laughs> it's yeah it's not a lot of rewatch rewatchable value yeah i mean obviously you can tell that dust and i were watching this is the first time watch for this but uh <sighs> Ma mally had an incredible experience for his first time watch <laughs> mally did not have an incredible experience with the movie he had an incredible experience with us discussing the movie there's sure. a big difference oh there. i mean i mean mally had a great experience with his physical copy of the movie when oh, he watched yeah. it the first time yes uh real quick on dustin's point though yeah like the three of us have been talking about this movie all day in the group sure. chat oh and i have just been giggling so fucking hard no, the, me, whole the whole time plan is we don't try we try not discuss our feelings on the movies especially if it's our first time seeing it until yeah. we record yeah and i much like you nathan with jurassic world fallen kingdom i just could not <laughs> sure. i was I know. I, I let me. I tell you this. I know we're ten minutes into the episode already, but l let me just get this out before we get any further. Sure. I very rarely. Usually, when I start a movie, I'll finish it even if I don't like it because yeah. I'm a purist. Like I don't want to. I'm the same I, way. Very yeah. few movies have I ever walked out of or turned off. Mm -hmm. I put this movie on and I'm watching and I'm like, oh, this is very slow. Yeah. I pause the movie. I wasn't even halfway yet, and I no. almost broke my TV. Yeah. I was so <laughs> furious. No, the first time, the first time that I stood up and like had to like take a little walk was I think twenty seven minutes in. <laughs> like I, I like genuinely like we were barely barely out of Brooklyn. God, had you had had you even made it to like the school yet? No, oh. that was my that was my thing. I was like, I know that this. 
Because just from what I know of the movie, I'm like, I know that this isn't the movie. We're just watching like yeah. the Asylum Presents Goodfellas. The cast, the poster list, Robert De Niro, Dustin Hoffman, Brad Pitt. I'm like, where are these people? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did I put the wrong movie on? I mean, as cool oh. as it is, like, I think I think a lot of these young actors are very good. Like Jonathan Tucker and, and uh, yes. Joe Perrineau is great. Brad Renfro, mm-hmm. uh, Gone Too Soon. Like, there was some really, Dude, the, like, like, act, like, acting was the best acting's the kid segment at the beginning mm-hmm. uh, yeah i would also argue that i th- i think de niro's very good but he's mm-hmm. underutilized i, I think agree. dustin hoffman's good even for like <laughs> this deadpan <laughs> navel gazing fucking lawyer could not stand say, that performance <laughs> <laughs> i loved it I, he knew what this movie was he was like oh everyone's this movie's called sleepers everyone's yeah. asleep at the will anyway fuck it i i thought it was a great performance i oh, i couldn't hear him <laughs> i i do i actually there's a scene that hoffman has that i think is great in this movie okay Mm. because there are there are a few scenes like the the big thing with this movie in my opinion yeah is that it's like one like kind of tightening up draft away from maybe being Uh, pitchable (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah a final draft (laughs) there's me and dustin kind of talked about this earlier yeah when we were texting but like if you just like there's so many scenes where like if you just cut out one or two lines yeah they would probably be pretty good scenes if they would end the scenes about four seconds early yeah it'd be much better and i will say we'll get to parts that could be trimmed down but yeah uh nathan we're kind of all over the place but nathan <laughs> did mention my first experience with this movie yes. oh yeah oh, yes. yeah so it was like 2006 2007 maybe i was still in high school and i was you know i was at goodwill mm-hmm. you know because i could afford to shop there <laughs> and <laughs> nothing's changed uh, <laughs> um i'm browsing the dvd section right yeah and like i pick like there's like three copies of this movie sleepers i'm like oh what is this which yeah. that always happened like i remember there was i remember uh what was it blu-ray and what was the other thing that was coming out hd dvd like, the ultra there was one ultraviolet or whatever that oh stuff yeah was called. yeah there was one there was one time i went there and there were 10 copies of hd dvd all v for vendetta <laughs> yeah when you see multiple copies of the same movie in a thrift place that should tell you all you need to know <laughs> uh not necessarily well it was usually because uh mom and pop store went out of business and right. everything yeah. got donated yeah. um and that's what that's what happened here because yeah. my copy of sleepers had like a local like video rental sticker on it and i was like oh whatever oh, man. so i pick it up i'm looking at it like man like oh shit like barry levinson like brad pitt sure. De Niro, like this what is the, what is this movie yeah I, I'm excited. Like, I go home. Um, I'm like, I paid $2 for this. Tight. <laughs> um, I pop it in. I'm watching it. I'm like, man, all right, this is uh, this is a slow burn. Yeah. But, like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of interested. Like, you know, um, again, I was in high school. So I was like, I was like, I don't know what a good script is. <laughs> uh, but, like, I'm yeah. watching it and I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of in. Like, I was like, ah, like, I like, like, I'm a big true crime fan. Sure. So, you know, this is kind of my cup of tea, I guess. I'm into it. And then it gets and then like it jumps forward and like it gets to the part where Jason Patrick and Brad Pitt like how where they meet up right after the shooting like they meet up under the train tracks. Yeah. And like Brad Pitt's like, yeah, I'm thinking revenge. And then it just cut to black. (laughs) And I was like, yo, sleepers two cruise control (laughs) fucking dude like rock and roll ending like when sleepers two dropping right and i was just so confused like wait like what the hell stayed after the credits for nick fury to (laughs) invite them (laughs) i started like getting going over the computer i'm like yo sleepers two like imdb and then i look over and on the tv it says Please flip DVD to other side. Insane. No. And I was like, wait, wait, what? Insane. Wait, 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 huh? And then I go over, I flip the DVD, put it in. And I'm like, oh, there's so much more left. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's probably how I felt when I, with the pause. I think I was right around that. I've area. never seen a DVD like that. <sighs> that was my first time. Man. That should tell you something. <laughs> uh, the only time I've ever had something similar to that was... The Reservoir Dogs DVD I mm. bought once huh. was full screen on one side and widescreen on the other. That's the oh, closest. Oh yeah, that was like a common thing for <laughs> a minute. That's the closest yeah. I've experienced to having to flip a DVD. <laughs> what a uh, what a weird find. Huh. Uh, 
I will say one last thing before we get into, you know, the, the nitty gritty of this movie is this movie is what, two hours and 20 something minutes. Ugh. Yeah. Somehow. And I know this is not physically possible, but somehow <laughs> two hours and 27. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. It's not physically possible, but somehow the extended version of any of the Lord of the Rings movies is quicker to watch mm -hmm. than this movie. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible, but it is. Well, it's because there's elves in those movies, man. Yeah. Yeah, there's things happening on screen. Put an elf in this movie, flying by. Ugh. They should have They should have dropped Kevin Bacon into a volcano, right? <laughs> uh, that would have been rad. Yeah. Well, we've already discussed a lot of it, but why don't we discuss a little bit more sure. of uh, the creation and the release of 1996's Sleepers. Sure. Oh boy, the year, like I said, is 1996. The director, as Mally so eloquently, uh, elo eloquently put earlier, is Barry Levinson. I thought you said the director is Mally. I was like, fuck, did I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Which also means when Mally bought this, uh, like his most recent movie would have been Envy with Jack Black. <laughs> like, yeah. And you're still like excited about it. I was interested. I was like, what is this movie? Uh, that's fair. Can you guys guess? Because I always I get my cast list from Roger Ebert. Mm -hmm. Can you guys guess who he lists first in the cast listing? Uh, hmm. The guy that plays King Benny. <laughs> does he just does he list bacon because it's by alphabetical Kevin Bacon is listed but it's not alphabetical and he is not first interesting this is kind of a fun game mini driver mini driver is second huh. interesting Hoffman it is it is Dustin Hoffman who has first. like a total of four <laughs> minutes of screen time he comes in in the last 15 minutes of the movie <laughs> But the way he listed as starring Justin Hoffman, Minnie Driver, wow. Robert De Niro, Kevin Bacon, Jason Patrick, and Brad Pitt. That that I read that review and it's baffling. Like yeah. it is, it's a weird. It's he calls a weird, this movie homophobic. Yes, yeah, he does. He says it's a homophobic revenge weird. fantasy, which I'm just like, that's. I don't think that's the takeaway the, here. He took, like, yeah, he took away the wrong part of that. Whole yeah, situation. very strange. <laughs> and the thing is, like. Ebert was clear, obviously a, a genius, but he had issues with like the thriller genre and the horror genre. Like yeah. it was, he was yeah. very inconsistent when it came to those. Yeah, but yeah, it was such a strange read. Very much so. Um, movie had a pretty modest budget, forty four million dollars, and grossed one hundred and sixty six million dollars worldwide, which is insane. In the nineties, this is the first I'm hearing about this movie. Yeah, no one has ever talked about this movie. This movie <laughs> is a big product of its time, though. Yes. Like, yes. dude, like courtroom dramas in the nineties. Yeah, printing money. Oh yes. yeah, when you put when you put this on the list, I was like, oh yeah, that's like a John Grisham thing, isn't it? And it's not. I just always <laughs> like lumped it in with that. Um, but also like, uh, you know, there's the cast, Barry Levinson is, a, you know, at this time is still like, you know, the guy who made Rain Man and Diner and also like, good morning, the, Vietnam. the story behind the, yeah, the story that this was based off of was like a very controversial thing. So I'm sure oh, it brought, yeah, that, that book was pretty controversial. I'm sure it brought in a lot of curious people. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, the movie currently sits at a 73% on Rotten Tomatoes. And this last little bit of information here blew my fucking mind because one of my notes of this movie was this score is so boring and uninspired. Yeah. It's fucking composed by John Williams. And <laughs> was nominated, nominated for an Oscar. For an Oscar. Nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the one moment that like I got hype about in this with this score was when it cuts forward to 1981 and Ron Eldard and Billy Crudup are walking down the street and all of a sudden it's like something out of like Snatch or Lockstock. Mm -hmm. yep. It's just like boom, dun -ka -dun -ka -dun -ka -dun -dun -ka -dun. <laughs> which and it also has the single worst shot of the movie, which is just when it holds way too long on them. Well, no, it's that weird like crane down Dutch angle of them oh, walking. Sure. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. So yeah. bad. But again, I don't know. I think I think some of the football flashbacks might take Take credit Ooh, for like the worst yeah. shots Ooh, in the movie. Yeah. We will talk about that football game. Oh my god! Um, but again, when it comes to when when it comes to the score, that's again, dude. The, it was the it was the nineties, man. It is awful. But this score, this score has this is John Williams in like hook mode. Like this has like a an almost uh like sweet saccharine set. Like yeah. the the end of the movie is like 
is like a triumphant sound, like yes. score. And, and this like, is right before John Williams does one of the best pieces of music in the biggest franchise he's a part of. This is right before he does Duel the Fates. Oh, sure. Yeah. Which is insane because he is, I mean, again, I think the name of the movie is very apt because I feel <laughs> like a lot of people were asleep at the wheel with this fucking thing. <laughs> um, I haven't watched it yet, but... Listener, if you're unfamiliar with the movie, which I'm sure you are. Can can we not watch the trailer, please, God? We gotta. No, we fucking don't. This trailer's insane. We gotta. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, and I'm ready. Please, I am begging. Can we just <laughs> mi- skip this No, segment? you know what? You made us watch this fucking movie, so we're watching this fucking trailer. We're, we're all in. I want to hear Dustin's reactions to this trailer, like, all more right. than anything. Someone, someone text me when it's over. All right. We're all in. Fuck it. We'll do it live. <laughs> You read The Count of Monte Cristo lately? I read a little bit of it every night. I read words like... For all, revenge, for all of our listeners that revenge. constantly write in about how this is the worst segment in our show, I, I, I agree. Sure. No, you don't even read the email. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, people personally DM me. <laughs> oh my god, the three minutes it takes to watch the trailer is the worst part of a two-hour episode. Boo-hoo. I'm just repeating what the listeners say. Yeah, well, the listener can shove it. I'm angry this episode. When a childhood prank resulted in Oh my god, this scene. The court hereby sentences you to no less than one year at the Wilkinson Home for Boys. The punishment. God, even the trailer's got fucking voiceover. Uh, yeah, but that's very 90s. It, it was the trailer, dude. Every trailer had 90s. Yes. Or wait, you know what I was trying to say. Yeah, I got you. I miss hearing Don LaFontaine's voice in every trailer, honestly. Years <laughs> later, they bound together. He went in there and he asked for the case. Now you tell me, what the hell kind of friend is that? In a pact to avenge those that who shot, destroyed That shot, that fucking yeah, shot. Yeah, that's a pretty bad so shot. That's a student film shot. Life. Yeah. It's payback time. It's our time. I don't think you know the meaning of rules. Rules! You understand? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Can you imagine if someone ever did that to give you a definition? Case. <laughs> I am afraid. Like I don't think you know the meaning of Interstellar. Interstellar. <laughs> no one knows if I did this information. I mean nobody. How did you get it? It fell in the I way. hate that scene. This does show you most of the movie too. Don't ever question your word before today. No, but there's a first time for everything. And makes it look like an action thriller. <laughs> Complete with music from Shaft. <laughs> Based on the controversial best. See, they were even using the controversy to sell the movie. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, let's fucking talk about sleepers. First of all, why is this movie called Sleepers? It's the. It's it's explained in one line that it's is what it? boys who yeah who boys who were sent to the pen, like the juvie hall yeah. are called sleepers. Oh, God. Like that's what they. Yeah, it doesn't really justify it. Also, so. sorry, Nathan, real quick. Yeah. All right, now let's fucking talk about sleepers. <laughs> so, wait, did you just open a can of Everclear? Oh yeah, they make it in cans now. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> do do we specifically for this movie it was a crossover promotion? <laughs> <laughs> do we want to get into the uh, the Lorenzo Carcaterra of it all? I mean, we might as well. Sure. This, I mean, gotta say, the dude is sticking to his fucking story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good it's, lord. He, he tells, yeah, because he's he supposedly he is shakes. Uh, the you know he he wrote his story as a novel, and uh, people have looked into it since then. The and it, actually to the point where there the the uh, there's a disclaimer at the end of the movie that was added after mm-hmm. it came to home video saying basically oh well oh yeah there from what i wrote from the research i did there's two different versions yes. of that yeah okay yep yeah yep. and continue please so basically uh the district attorney's office has said this trial never happened mm-hmm. uh other people have said uh no murder like this ever took place mm-hmm. other also like he's he wrote a novel about how he helped cover up a murder yeah like and yeah. there's no follow-up <laughs> and then so it's a, it's very strange and then also like throughout the years every time someone kind of questioned it his his deal was at first he said everything's true except the names yep and then when he was pressed again he was basically like everything's true except the names the places some of the events like you know, <laughs> yeah the, the main uh, 
um, crux of the story. <laughs> yeah, it's so strange. But Barry Levinson also like went to bat for him. There were people who uh, were were like close to the situation that have uh, you know vouched for him. But it's all it's all a very very strange uh well, it's like background if you want to go with like the based on it like just do the coen brothers thing like they do it with like fargo and sure shit, and it's yeah. great like this is a true story yeah i get yeah i i'm sure there are parts of this that are true but i i don't know you know to what extent uh, yes like i'm i'm sure that you know a trial has happened in new york city <laughs> yeah. about something at some point i'm sure that people have been friends in hell's kitchen yes i'm sure that you know there has been a priest that smoked cigarettes yeah right. and bald like a fucking g which is actually funny because catholic priests are actually uh barred from smoking yeah. yeah um hell's kitchen is a place yes yeah we talked about this with the the strangers based sure. on a true story it's no <laughs> yeah someone's car broke down once you know yeah. I, I when i my other podcast we just did texas chainsaw massacre and that was like a thing we talked about where i was like yeah the true story is that there was a guy you know yeah who, yeah. who collected skin and that's that is like it. it's loosely based on ed Gein, yeah but not really <laughs> you know what would be funny the the one person that could pull this off is i want like an mcu movie to start off with like a Based on a true story. This, yes, but it's got to be Taika Waititi, one of his Thor movies. That right. would be hilarious to do. There's that. a Nick Swardson bit where he said, like, I want just one fucking Jurassic Park movie to start with based on a true story. Just to <laughs> fuck with the stonies in the audience. That's pretty good. Can I guys tell you, I had a revelation, an epiphany of sorts. Oh, no. At the end of this movie. These are never good. Uh-oh. This movie is basically it. Stephen King's It. Yeah. Yeah. Mixed with mixed with good fellas. Childhood friends who suffered a traumatic event. Only instead of a clown, it's a pedophile. Exactly. Childhood friends who suffered a traumatic event as kids with a single female friend that they all liked. Mm -hmm. That they then have to reunite as adults to confront their troubles. And they both have a scene where they reunite in the back of a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. I will say, Dustin, that's not the hot take you think it is. That has, that's been a thing with this movie for a while. Oh, I'm sure. Really? But I was like, oh, wow. it, it clicked <laughs> yeah. for me. I was like, oh, there's way too much it in this movie. Yeah. And, and like, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to like discredit this guy's story. I mean, he, he has no, like, stuck, I will. Well, he, like, he stuck <laughs> to it through the years and Barry Levinson, there was this uh, really great interview with the times where he essentially was just like, why the fuck would this guy tell his story like this if it wasn't true? But also again, I come, I keep coming back to like, why would you tell a story about how you covered up a murder? Yep. Like, why would you, it's so strange. Anytime I hear the whole based on a true story and then people yeah. are like arguing oh that didn't happen i'm like i don't give a shit just yes. tell the fucking movie yeah. just make the movie <laughs> i don't care if it was based on a true story and in my, like my opinion the worst part of this movie uh-huh is after the time jump like yeah. that's when well you mean in terms of like just acting and execution in general or like how do you, or just how do you entertainment mean? both uh -huh. yeah like all of it like i like the stuff with the kids is like kind of cool like i'm a sucker for like fucking like 60s like yeah. hell's kitchen like that whole like vibe is just kind of like interesting to me like oh yeah like i love like that kind of whole thing and they touch upon it in like after the time jump where it's just like like the neighborhood is like its own like almost like the neighborhood is like a person kind of yeah oh that part was interesting like, that's that's super interesting to me but then after and they the, do nothing with it yeah but then after the time jump it all just kind of falls apart like th like yeah Nothing makes sense. <laughs> well, Jason Patrick is not a leading actor for me. They were trying real hard in the 90s. Ooh, I mean, yeah. between they this were. and and Neela Butte's movies and uh, yeah. uh, Speed 2, uh, like there was, yeah, people were really trying. Yeah, oh God, Speed 2. I think the last thing I saw him in was that movie Losers. Oh, sure. <laughs> With like Chris Evans and Idris Elba, he played the villain. He, I think he's a compelling actor, but yeah, he's not he's not like a but he's not the marquee guy like no, I, no. I agree i mean there's a reason he's pretty low on the poster yeah i mean yeah the kid stuff is a lot more interesting than the adult stuff and mostly 
Because there's no tension with the adult stuff. Right. They kill Kevin Bacon, and then they tell you, we're going to cover up this murder, and then they... And then we watch them do it. Yeah. Like, it's... Yeah. Uh, they don't have any opposition. Like, it works out for them the whole time doing it. Yes, nothing of stakes happens. There's... I mean... The only conflict is wondering if Bobby will do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and even then, we don't see him wrestle with the... Right. Nope. It cuts to him being like, I have a lot to think about, and then, like, yeah. five minutes... Like, not even five minutes later... He, he's perjuring himself on the stand. It's like, okay, we don't get to see like the interesting part of him. Like, Do you think he said that? Cause he had to like walk away and read the script for analyze this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you that with, with Jason Patrick and Mitty driver go to talk to him Yeah, and Jason Patrick starts telling the story. I'm like, no dude, this is what the movie should be about. It should be from Robert De Niro's perspective. Yeah. And tell the story of a priest that like failed to save these four young boys from yes, going to jail. Yeah. He has the most interesting story. And then he has to battle with the efficacy and morality of not only lying under oath, but he's a priest. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. like, well, do you lie under oath to protect these kids and yeah. that murdered their rapist? Like, that's interesting. Yeah, that's that's what that second half should have been. Yes, yes. That's, that should have been the movie. That was way more interesting. But you're, you're right. There's a there's a different energy also to like the first act of the movie. Like, I I love the kind of Bronx tale Goodfellas style stuff like and this will come back up in my <laughs> in my pickup movie later. But yeah, I just I feel like feel like like I'm so emotionally disconnected from the adult versions of these characters, especially because we meet back up with, you know, Billy Crudup and Ron Eldard and they get this great scene. Yeah. And then they don't have lines for the next hour and a half. Yeah. I know, dude. And like Billy Crudup, like that was his that his this film is debut. his film debut. Yeah. And like that scene, like you kind of get like because like again, like the first half has issues yes but sure i don't like it's like after the first half i'm like okay it's a little slow but like i'm still interested like okay like this could be cool yeah and then like we get the cool scene with billy crudup and yeah. uh i sorry i can't remember the other guy's name ron eldard yeah uh, yeah thank you sweet handlebar mustache oh my god the sickest mustache mm -hmm. um and like that scene's like pretty good like i love like I, yeah i think that scene's great when he's like he's like hey get these guys get these guys a drink yeah you know let them know the rules <laughs> yeah. like that's fucking rad oh, the, well that stuff pays off that is actually one thing they set up that pays off because then those two guys don't testify yeah uh -huh. against them that's right so that was actually great and then it was also interesting seeing two guys that are like these street toughs that had all this stuff happen yeah be like no republicans in here like that was kind of i was like really okay no religion no politics yeah, yeah. i figured they would be much more conservative in their you <laughs> yeah. know in their line of thinking that was kind of a surprise but then after immediately after that scene though yeah Ooh, it's a nosedive <laughs> the the pacing in this movie is insane it's it's insanely slow and dude after that scene the pacing just fucking comes to a stop yeah mm -hmm. well I, I sorry i keep interrupting you dustin no i was just gonna say um i do think it's funny that like the the vo the narration is like yeah. oh yeah the blonde haired guy blah 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 i'm like that dude does not have blonde hair no, in the he's slightest not. He's, he's not that happens a few times <laughs> i i think also like there's this weird thing that happens with with the pace in this movie where some things take forever mm -hmm. and and other things like we get kind of rushed through like you know shakes gets his job with with king benny and the next scene is him getting robbed, seeing his first murder, and then getting the other boys on board. Like, it is so, like, that stuff, I feel like it races through. Right. And then there's other mm -hmm. scenes where I'm just like, I've been in this restaurant with Dustin Hoffman for 15 minutes. Yep. <laughs> and they are saying nothing. <laughs> Dude, the, when they have Jason Patrick explaining to Robert De Niro everything that happened. Yeah. That little montage yes. of, like, him just telling the story. I counted it. It goes on for two full minutes of oh yeah. my God. inaudible dialogue and just John Williams score cranking. Yeah. There's <laughs> a, there's, so I mean, long. the cross examination towards the end of the movie does the same thing where it's like weird quick cuts and echoey dialogue. Oh, Dustin Hoffman just walk around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> taking a uh, stroll. <laughs> so strange. Uh, yeah. It's, it's weird what this movie chooses to focus on. Which the one, the one part I like about that scene with uh where jason patrick's like 
telling the story. Yeah. The only good part is just that shot of De Niro. But that's the only shot you really get. It just stays on his fucking face for two minutes. True. I wish it had been that, though. I wish it had been like 30 seconds of just De Niro's yes. like, micro expressions because he De Niro is very good in this movie. Yes. But I will say, it looks like he's staring at the director during that scene. He's like, right. are we yeah. still rolling? <laughs> yep. <laughs> sure. Um, dude, the scene where he confronts, uh, like, the stepdad. Oh, yeah. Is so good. Really good. Mm -hmm. Again, dude, that first half is with, like, it has issues, but it's relatively solid. I, yeah. I didn't also, speaking of Robert De Niro, I didn't think watching Robert De Niro fucking ball was something I wanted to see until this movie. Yes. But watching him play basketball, I'm like, I kind of wanted to see more of this. Yeah, he should have been in A New Legacy. <laughs> he should have been in White Men Can't Jump. <laughs> Love that scene where they're like, while most preach from the pulpit or whatever, like, he preferred to do it, like, on, on the, the court. court. I'm like, yeah. fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that's fucking rad. You know, there was another guy who was pretty baller. His name was Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I love the scene with the clacker. I think that's genuinely funny, and oh, it endears you to De Niro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's that's so good. That was funny. Just, I also... just getting the, he's, the nuns to stand up and down. Again, like, if you, if you had just kind of like what the dvd does if you had just ended the movie where the dvd does yeah pretty solid flick <laughs> yeah this is a decent prestige miniseries i had never heard of the the clacker thing oh, oh that's a thing this is not a new thought but catholicism is fucking insane right yeah <laughs> it's i mean it's we this is like an 80s bit but we definitely have to keep acknowledging that catholicism is out of fucking control <laughs> <laughs> well it's funny you it's funny you bring that up because billy crudup went and went in went to star in a movie called spotlight which deals with similar mm -hmm. issues to sure. this movie mm -hmm. yeah and also catholic my my girlfriend is catholic and every once in a while she'll just bust out with something and i'm like oh like that's a that's a thing you guys did like oh, i didn't oh, like yeah. i just didn't know <laughs> like the ritual i think is really nice but it's just like occasionally i'm just like man i I didn't even like that's I don't I don't know how to respond to that being a thing. Yeah, yeah. I had a, a cousin who was married to a woman that was Catholic before. My whole family was uh -huh. Pentecostal. Oh, boy. And I was like eight or nine. And he was like, hey, do you want to go with us to mass? I'm like, mass what? <laughs> so, We're all going to go play mass go. effect. Yeah, for real. I decided to go because I, I didn't know what he was talking about. I was like, oh, this is church. Okay. Sure. And walk in. And I swear to God, I'm not making this up. Uh, I walk in and, you know, everyone's going to the pews and everything. And I see this water fountain that's close by. <laughs> oh, no. And you know where the story's going. I go, you know, take it. I'm like, oh, this is not a water fountain. This got a little push button. You just kind of dip your hands in. <laughs> fucking, fucking drink out. <laughs> no, Dustin. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So that happened. But it turned to blood as soon as you touched it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I mean, th that's where the story is. But yeah, the fact that it happened. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just because I know there's maybe some audience members that do aren't in on the joke. Oh, sure. What was that water fountain, Dustin? That turned out to be a very special kind of water. One would almost say it's holy. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, tasted terrible, by the way. Uh, yeah, as it should, because it's just water sending out in an open bowl. Yeah, <laughs> stagnant. Like, <laughs> yeah, they oh. they save that for vampires. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like my I like my water without Jesus in it. It just it tastes better. <sighs> Good These lord. These crackers represent his body. This water is his urine. Go ahead and fucking <laughs> splash it on your face. Uh. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think I think you need to reread your scriptures. <laughs> Is that how it goes? Um, I don't know. I feel like we need Jesus after this episode, though. <laughs> I gotta say, nope. So we go back to Robert De real quick. Sure. Is it just me, or does he look somehow younger in this movie than he did in Taxi Driver? Because <laughs> he looks insanely young. Okay, that's one thing I want to point out. The makeup on De Niro is pretty fucking good yes he looks so young he looks so young in the first half like shakes his parents don't age no they don't you know king <laughs> benny king benny looks old as fuck the whole movie yeah uh in king benny's defense like once you hit a certain age you just look like that oh yeah peter life. falk was 84 30 years <laughs> yeah i mean it's not it's not as bad as uh the character's in spike lee's old boy that we talked oh, about that don't God. age after 20 years yeah yeah <laughs> Um, also, Ugh. I gotta say, I was kind of, like, drifting in and out towards the end of this movie. When uh -huh. they introduced Dustin Hoffman, I swear to God, I thought they were trying to pass him off as an older Robert De Niro. 
You, wait, what? What? <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Because like he's and the trial's been going on for thirty years. Well, like, no, like they they show Robert De Niro. They and you know at the beginning of the movie, oh, they all that's go right. to yeah, yeah. the school. The bad shit yeah. happens, and before they return to Nero, that's right. They show Hoffman, and I'm like, oh, these they're showing everybody who's aged, and I'm like, it's Dustin Hoffman supposed to be playing an older Robert De Niro, and I'm like, that's ah, hilarious, ah, ah, and I'm like, ah, ah, it ah. actually kind of works. <laughs> no, his performance is so strange. It's... And then they show De Niro, and I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. That's a totally he's, like, different. He's looking character. up. <laughs> He's looking up at the ceiling. He's mumbling and whispering. There's this great moment. He's like moment. an autistic Columbo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he's like he he does play like either he's drunk right now. And or... I can say that because I have an autistic son. Just so you know. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Of course. <laughs> For the listener out there, he does say he has this bit where he he leans in to King Benny and he says, you know, along with my alcohol problem, I also have a small drug problem. Yes. And and I you, my. <laughs> My, I imagined that that was exactly what the conversation was when he got cast. Like he said that to like Barry Levinson, because you know, you know Hoffman as like one of those hardcore method actors always has to go to the the crew and be like, so here's my fucking deal this time. This is what yeah. you guys have to put up with. <laughs> he's like, so I was thinking, uh, Barry, I was thinking for uh, for this character, I'd uh, stare up at the ceiling and uh, do a lot of drugs. I mean. I'll I'll kind of play devil's advocate. I kind of was on board. I'm like, if they did a spinoff and it was just about this dude Ugh. going to trials, I kind of would be fucking in on it because it is like this bumbling deadpan delivery. And I'm like, somehow it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it'd be it would literally be Law and Order Alcoholics Anonymous. Unit. I would watch that. I yeah. would fucking watch. Oh, that. I would too. I'd be down. <laughs> the the scene where he's like looking down at his notes and just going like, uh. Um, uh, 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 it was genuinely like funny in a, when it shouldn't have been. Oh, and then Mini Driver being the voice of the audience being like, it's fucking pulling teeth with this guy. Oh man, I love her. <laughs> well, and it keeps cutting to Brad Pitt who's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, just find the fucking line. And like, yeah. that's what we're all thinking in the audience too. Just like, what the fuck is he doing? Do you think Dustin Hoffman actually had the script right there? Uh, 100%. And he was like, uh, what is my fucking line? <laughs> he's, like, he's like Marlon Brando in uh, Island of Dr. Moreau. Oh, with he's the earpiece like, in? <laughs> yeah. No, that was, they shot the fucking rehearsal on that one is what they did. Yeah. Well, like I said, I would watch that that lawyer as a spinoff. I would be fucking into that. <laughs> Uh, I mean, we're all over the place. Can we go back a little bit uh, to the to the kids? Yeah, stuff? my my next note is uh, pancaked by a hot dog stand. Oh my god! <laughs> so tiny dinky Daffy. So, <laughs> so when they had the VO guy, every scene he's like, and this was the day that everything changed. Everything sure. ended on. And this happens like six times throughout the movie, right? But dude, when they steal this hot dog cart and they're like, and everything changed in that moment, I'm like, what the fuck? I thought what was going to happen is that vendor guy the hot dog vendor was going to try and cross the street to get I thought shakes. Hit, get hit by a car yes and get hit by a car I did too. Yeah. and then they go to this hot dog cart which first of all just take the umbrella off of it it's much less noticeable for him to fucking find you without that giant anyway they go to the subway i don't know what the fucking plan is to get this down this thing and then this guy coming around the corner. Well, no, they weren't. They weren't trying to push it down the thing. What were they? Tr what were they trying to? I mean, they were trying to take it down. They they were gonna they were gonna hold it over the edge until the hot dog oh, guy okay. got there. But they slipped. So they were trying to be even more of an asshole. Yes. Well, they were. the The plan was to like as soon as he grabbed it to let go, so it would be his sure, problem sure. and they could escape. Gotcha. Yeah. So. Well, the thing is, they show this guy coming around the corner. It is convoluted, but it's also the kind of plan that kids would have. Yeah, yeah, no, that all, of, all of that whole scene kind of tracks for me. No, sure, up to that point, because I'm like, yeah, like that's some something some shitty kids something would do. Something you would have done on the farm back in the day. <laughs> Yeah, With only it was water. a track. It was, it was, well, yeah, only it was holding a cow over a hill. Dude, they dropped this cart. The fucking straws are going everywhere. The mustard is flying. I thought yeah. it was pretty fucking it's, funny. No, it's so comical, dude. No, it's, it's a scene right out of like, right out of like the Goonies or something. Like yes. it is. Yeah. But then this lone guy coming off the subway i yeah. see here but the way they're editing i'm like oh they're gonna kill this guy with a fucking hot dog cart right now I, I literally wrote in my notes okay now i'm into this movie <laughs> but the best part is any other movie 
you would not want to show him get hit with it because you want to imply the worst, right? Like, right, sure. But they showed this dummy getting railroaded by the yep. fucking hot dog cart. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's like when oh. it's like when Nordberg gets like hit by the hot dog cart in uh, the, at the at the end of the Naked Gun. Oh, do they do so much like when they drag that guy out to the field to shoot him, and even when they shoot Kevin Bacon, like you 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 don't have to. I get why you would want to show this because it's good squibbing, but like yes. it's so much better if you don't. Like you, the implied violence is so much better than the real thing. The murder of Kevin Bacon made made me laugh. At oh, first, yes. I was like, at first, I was like, this is awesome. Like the first shot, yeah, the first two shots, I was like, hell yeah! Like they shot his really because the the first shot, it almost looked he has a face. He almost has a face like someone just kicked him in the nuts. He right. goes like a, oh, it crosses well, his eyes. he gets shot in the fucking nuts. <laughs> oh. But they, yeah, they shoot him twice. And I was like, that's, but it did this thing where it kept cutting back and then they would raise their arms again to do it again. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. I was trying to think there is a movie I watched recently where they keep cutting back to someone like holding. Oh, you know what? It's Dear Sister. Mm, the oh SNL God. sketch like it's Andy Samberg and Bill Hader every time it cuts back to them they're raising the gun again <laughs> <laughs> yeah the editing in that scene is not great it's but very strange I wanted to say about the hot dog guy like I really I, I was so in on that moment yeah and this rarely happens but I was also then right after immediately taken right back out because yes. they have that woman is it the line yes what stupidest fucking line what in the name of god have you boys done i think we just killed the guy yeah <laughs> like again another ex another example of just cut the scene four yes, seconds in earlier the fucking scene. Yeah. in the scene you don't need that little exchange oh, and then they show that guy on like life support <laughs> because yeah. then the next the next scene like the next scene, yeah, they pull a fucking uh fucking rise of Skywalker, yeah. right? Where you find out the dude's not dead in the very next scene. He should have been dead. What a hilarious way to go out. <laughs> but also, so then we they get they get sentenced and we get to one of the first moments in the movie that I think is genuinely like unforgivable. And please tell me if I'm like way off on this, but the narration is talking about how the the other kids that are there are actually like unforg like can't be rehabilitated and this is oh when we yeah we're good bad boys but this is also <laughs> the first time that they show a black person in the movie the camera yep, cuts yep. to a bunch of black guys yep. and it says yeah these people are monsters and yep. I'm just like like I don't know if that was a choice or a poor poor editing oh I feel like there was definitely a choice this movie's got a weird like racist thing with black Ooh, people for i sure. like legitimately replayed the scene because i was like i can't i must be like getting the wrong vibe from this scene but no it just it feels really pointedly wrong it yeah when kevin bacon has a uh, altercation with the black guard yes and he calls him boy i'm like you know i get it i get that he's racist yeah i'm surprised they didn't take that character further like with the racist stuff. No, I expected him to come back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like that that character never comes back. The sympathetic guard. That dude should have been on the trial. He would yes. have clearly helped defended these guys. Thank you. Yeah. Why the fuck did they not call him? They never mentioned him again. <laughs> Bacon's not good in this, right? No. No, I'm so glad you brought this up. I thought it was going to be alone in this, but I do not buy him as the villain. No. He is too in scenery. Well, not even that. He's not scary he's not intimidating he's got like a weird wine like he's playing it like his character in footloose almost yeah. like he's kind of just like kind of just shouty and petulant and like dude ferguson was so much more menacing yeah, yeah. like with having no dialogue really in the first half of the movie like yeah. kevin bacon scarier in super yeah oh sure yeah yeah, yeah. which you guys you guys covered that last year right yes oh, we did yeah we did oof Boy, howdy. What a what a what a trip. Episode 99, listener. If you haven't heard that one, go back and check it out. Maybe our maybe our best like addition to an existing film ever came out of the Super <laughs> oh, yeah. so Putting putting uh the fixer into endgame. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe some of our best work. Maybe some of our best work. Um I forgot about that. Oh, we got James Gunn's approval on that too. <laughs> um yeah, I, I don't know, because I like Kevin Bacon, but he's yeah. 
uh, and it's not just because his character is reprehensible, which he is. He's the worst. Yeah. Um, but I, I think the performance is bad. And I don't know if it's because he's just not comfortable with the material, which I get. I would not want to be playing this character. Yeah. I, that was a question I had. I, I, I wrote down, I was like, I wonder what it's got to feel like as an actor yeah. to read a script, knowing you're going to be playing a racist pedophile and be like, yeah, I'll do it. Sure. Like, that's bizarre. It's funny you say that because uh, he did interviews and in the interviews, he said it was hard for him. To, like he would be like hanging out with like the kids, like in between setups and stuff. Oh, yeah. And they liked him a lot. Yeah. And it was hard for him to get into character. Sure. Oh, no, I, I'm, I imagine Kevin Bacon is amazing to hang out with. But yeah. like maybe that's the problem. Maybe because they were hanging out on set. Yeah. That his performance then comes off as like half hearted like it's a weird like they they he kind of he probably should have done the thing that old boy from uh it did where yeah, he just, did not right. interact yeah. with the exactly. cast exactly. My, i have a friend who gets every time he gets an audition it's always to play like a white supremacist like it's a weird thing and like he's it's like it, he said it's demoralizing to like have to <laughs> white, play this white dude with a shaved head yeah, no, say, but, white dude with a shaved no it's a it's a it's a white dude with uh with a beard and like a southern accent and for some reason he's always oh, getting he's checking off a lot of boxes i know oh i get it <laughs> trust me i get it he, i mean living in pensacola there's there's very few things you can be i mean there's nothing wrong with playing that as a character if you can play a menacing i mean how many times have clancy brown played like a villain you know and he's great he's a he's a he's a good actor he's a good and he's he's like dedicated but he he you know it's demoralizing to like have to get that yeah <laughs> those same sure. calls yeah. all the time I, yeah and so i wonder if that was where bacon was at where he's just like i look this he, like maybe he was taken by the material but then he was just like i don't want to be this person <laughs> and he just couldn't get there mm -hmm. that's very possible that's very possible. And I also think it's not just Kevin Bacon. I think everybody in this movie is not giving the proper direction. Yeah, I agree. Something about the direction and the editing and the writing. I just, yeah, I don't buy anybody in this movie. There are little moments that I think are brilliant. Like there's um, when Bobby comes to visit and shakes won't hug him oh. yeah. like he. Oh, he, that seems fantastic. Again, dude, that crushes me. The first half of this movie pretty good yeah. really yeah no i and i think i think that scene is like the acting in that scene is tremendous um yeah i also think uh, this movie thinks it's way smarter than it is because oh sure when they show young shakes getting thrown into solitary yeah and he's like oh it's just a football game i'm like oh, okay so someone died right yes. like i get it right away but i will say they do one really cool thing and in, in the one part of this movie where i kind of perked up a little bit uh -huh. When he's just staring at his hands and the flashback of the game is being projected onto his hands. Mm, that's it's like great. a very Yeah. It's a really fucking cool shot. It's a clever shot. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that before. And I was like, that's yeah. fucking cool. And then that that's the only cool thing they do in this whole movie. Yeah, well, because then immediately we're taken to one of the worst uh choices, which is the the weird blue flashbacks. It's so, and oh, we're already shot. in a flashback. So like what <laughs> yeah. the fuck? Like what are yeah. we doing? <laughs> Oh, this football game, as soon as they said what it was, it's guards versus these teenage inmates, I fucking hollered with laughter. I was yeah. like, oh, this is going to be fucking hilarious. Well, and then they're straight up punching the guards and like there's no... Oh, they're kicking them in the dick? <laughs> there's no reaction. And then we see this whole game. Yeah. You know, it feels like. And then yeah. it's not clear when slash how they get beat up and thrown in solitary. Like you, you show so much, but then not that. It's so strange. Yeah. I thought it was going to be like um, the football game in the uh, Nine Other Teen movie. Okay. Like they, we... I thought you were going to say the longest yard. No, I was going <laughs> to say when uh, what's his name catches the ball. He's like, they're so excited. Oh, sure. And that was going to be Rizzo. And then they just get torn the... apart. Yeah. Just rip I forgot. <laughs> I'm due for a rewatch on that movie. Speaking of which, uh, Rizzo wink from eight mile. I thought, oh I was, my the whole God. Time I was, I was like, trying to figure out why from? I recognized yeah. him. Yeah. He's really good in this. Uh huh. His brother, little Caesar is also a big actor too. I can't remember his name though. Yeah. Uh, but he's in some stuff too. But yeah, as soon as I realized that was wink, I was like, Oh dude, <laughs> the, the scenes with little Caesar, um are some of the only scenes in the back half that i actually like like yeah. i like that scene with him and king benny i mean they could have they could have cut that part out and just had the narration of oh yeah king benny delivered so and so did, 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 did. whoa 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 more narration dustin <laughs> i'm saying if you want more to narration up, 
calm down, buddy. I'm saying, if you're already fucking knee deep in narration, and this movie would be so much better without it. Yeah. yeah. So much better without it. Again, so this movie kind of feels like, I say this about a lot of like the Netflix movies, like uh-huh. um, what was that Tom Holland movie oh cherry no that's apple netflix movie oh right it's not chaos walking is it um it had the dude for, had the dude from it oh, oh fuck. what was that movie um, called uh no. you know what i'm you know what i'm talking about something yeah. about the devil oh about the, the devil. Um, it's called the devil all the time yes what a terrible title like that 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 movie um a few other netflix movies like it feels like they shot the first draft yeah, yeah to where it's like okay like there's there's a good movie in here you just need to trim it like tighten it up uh no because we have robert pattinson doing a southern accent so we need to show all fucking 50 minutes fair point god damn yeah i am i don't know if i'll ever revisit that movie because i fell asleep yeah oh again i i didn't hate it but i was like there's so much of this movie you could have lost yes (laughs) yeah Dude, we're all over the fucking place, but can we, we really are. So is this movie. So yeah, I agree. Can we go back though, because there's still so much I want to talk about with the oh, kids. Oh yeah, yes, part. yes. Um, the the actor playing the young version of John, yeah, is so fucking tiny. <laughs> he is so with, small. Yeah. When they show them going into the confessional booth, he, he, you know how there's like the 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 term headroom with cinematography, yes. like yeah. the actor headroom. His is all headroom because he's shot from <laughs> yeah. the chin up, and they it's just like an eighth of the struggling, <laughs> struggling real hard to keep that kid in the shot. That dude, that's an that's another scene in that like that's a great scene of, part of the movie where I'm like, oh, this is a funny scene. Like dude, the pregnant woman is hilarious. I thought she was so funny. Yeah, and then the fact, yeah, the real reveal that she knew it was two kids that was really funny. Yeah, but then when they show the football game. And they're showing this little kid, John, yeah. in the game. I'm like, oh, this kid should have died. Yeah, yeah. Game. like a guard's <laughs> going to step on him. Yes. And they show him at one point scoring a touchdown. I'm like, dude, there's no way. He would be demolished in this fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> Crumple that kid. Yeah. Oh, uh, that that has a different context in this <laughs> yeah. movie. Sorry. Nathan, don't. We don't. talked about Shakespeare's family and how they don't age. Dude. Uh, one of the parts I know I'm not supposed to laugh at, but when they go back and Jason Patrick's having dinner with his dad. Oh my god! And he just keeps shouting at the mom. Well, well, he's like, "Where's the fucking About the fucking spoon?" Yeah, he's like, "Give me the spoon or whatever." And then this woman comes in. I'm like, "She's still with him." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. After like, and it's it's strongly hinted that he murdered his first wife. He says, "I buried one fucking wife. I could bury another." Wife. Yeah. And apparently in one of uh, Lorenzo Carcaterra's other books, he talks about how he's like pretty sure his dad killed like, his, mm-hmm. his ex-wife. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, no, when they when the when mob comes enters frame, I lost. I was like, this poor fucking woman. I was like, she is the and she's just smiling. She's the emotional punching bag. Of this movie, which it's like, I will. I will say, dude, like they are obviously super catholic like you oh don't, yeah i mean they, they make a point about that she she can't divorce him there's an incredible line that he has toward the beginning he says for a marriage to end someone usually had to die yeah yeah no with, but kind of similar to not another teen movie uh-huh. i thought that this this mom was the equivalent of the stepmom in sex drive did any of you guys see that movie? Oh, <laughs> nope. when it way back when it came out. When she I, gets like she keeps trying to do nice things and just keeps getting fucking like slapstick destroyed. Like at one point, yeah, the main character's trying to put on a condom for the first time and she enters the room and it flies and hits her in the face. Sure, <laughs> like, okay, that's the, that's the equivalent just of the this actress. Mom, movie. yeah, <laughs> yeah, just co- constantly just getting beat for no reason. Oof. Oh, I will say that that actor that plays uh, shakes his dad, I really liked. Oh, he's I mean, great. He's yeah. A, terrible human being in the movie but great yeah. actor for that part oh bruno kirby i <laughs> yes. mean donnie brasco yeah. godfather part two good morning mm-hmm. yeah. who's in good morning vietnam he was like a barry levinson regular yeah he rules mm-hmm. mm, gotcha i gotta ask too when the judge is sentencing the boys i i picked up on something i don't know if i've ever seen this before but do judges usually sentence people with both minimums and maximum sentences i think it depends on the, the circumstances and I think, okay because yeah because this one, they're like, they're, he's also remanding them to like a juvenile facility. So it's not right. it's yeah. not quite like an adult, you know, penitentiary sure. where they're just like, no, this is how many years you're going. Yeah. No less than 18 months. No more than two no, years. No more than eight, like, yeah. Something bizarre. like that. Yeah. 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 But also during that part with the VO going to, I'm like, boy, you could just feel this movie being based on a book. <laughs> like, oh, oh sure. yeah. 
And I will say, ba- I haven't. I read the book. Oh, really? Years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have it. It's sitting about five feet from me. Um, I was gonna try to reread it for this episode, but I didn't have time. Um, you're good, probably. Ba- yeah, based off what I remember of it, like they didn't really cut much. Like the yeah, only, I, believe, no, I fully believe that. <laughs> the only thing, yeah, the only thing I can remember that's different is that. In the book, uh-huh. after De Niro testifies, as he's walking out, the cr- like the audience, in oh yeah, the they applaud, court, right? Applauds. I him read that for yeah. no reason. They give him a standing and, like, ovation. If I w- if I was the judge, I'd be like, well, that's suspicious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> Which I mean, that his whole like the way they are found not guilty makes no fucking no. sense. No, nope. but that's a whole other conversation. <sighs> um. I will say too, Mal. I gotta point out something. I think you got the uh, the clue for this movie wrong after re-listening because your clue was who built the other fifteen chapels, but Michelangelo didn't build the chapels. He just painted the ceiling of one. Motherfucker! Of them. <laughs> I didn't rewatch the movie to get the line exactly oh, right. That's a good joke, though. The sixteen it chapels. Is a good joke. That's a good joke. Yeah, that is a good joke. But I, th- I thought it was funny. I was like, oh, man, I got something wrong for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, I I got the movie a few episodes ago wrong. Like, why is that shocking to you? That's true. <laughs> they're uh, they're murdering people in this penitentiary, and no one no one knows it's to the point where uh, little Caesar says later on they told me that Rizzo died of pneumonia yeah. I was like they beat him to death did yeah. they like well we don't really ever see what happens to Rizzo yeah it's so, just so it's so strange I like, just assumed it was going to be a very racist way they killed him so I was surprised when they didn't show anything at all what yeah. was and what was with the there's a scene that's like just 30 seconds of them watching a movie uh, yeah do you it, remember that like it cuts to I them was, like I'll be honest I probably was drifting in there's n- it's there's no point it, yeah, it's very strange. It like there's a couple of scenes like that where it'll just cut to someone like having a conversation and then you never see them again or know what they were talking <laughs> about. Oh, speaking of which, another person they should have called as a fucking character witness. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck is John Slattery in one fucking scene of this movie? <laughs> oh my god, and he's he's really good. Yeah, yeah I had he's to look great. up. I gotta say. He's fucking hot as a young man. <laughs> God damn, he was good looking. Again, guys, the first half of this movie is pretty fucking good. It's yeah. really fucking good. But yeah, John Snyder showed up. I'm like, holy shit, this dude's hot. Yeah. And then giving him the book and everything like they're They missed. Yeah. Y- you know, Mal, you just mentioned it, but they really should not have gotten away with this fucking trial at the end. They no. The dumb- Why did they not call t- these two guys, him and the, the other guard? Yeah. Well, like... <sighs> It's the dumbest shit. And here's the thing about the trial at the end. And they pointed out in the movie the fact that Michael, the prosecutor, is calling a character witness for the dead guy. Yeah. Right. Makes no yeah. sense. Right, right. It's also bizarre that they're like, you know, they try to cover it up with, uh, isn't it suspicious that you're the attorney on this case and we're all friends and we all went to the same juvenile hall like oh after no one no one makes that connection like at no point like it's it's not until it's not until ferguson is like 15 minutes into the cross-examination that all of a sudden he realizes who's in the courtroom with him it's so it's yeah it's very odd dumb because he's in a trial i'm sure he would know who is on trial right (laughs) but yeah they try really hard to cover it up because brad uh brad pitt has a line where he's like oh after seven years all juvenile hall uh uh records are destroyed but i'm like that makes sense but like the person who was there would remember it well not only that it would be in the fucking newspapers (laughs) right (laughs) these four kids got sent to like it doesn't matter if the records got wiped i mean that just also means the jury did no fucking right did nothing i I was surprised they just didn't pay them off why the fuck not you paid off the other lawyer right you got the character witness fuck it pay the judge off who gives a shit this is a kangaroo court as fuck (laughs) (laughs) um now we're we're getting into another actor that i think is not good in this movie which is brad pitt yeah 
Oh, no, dude. He said in interviews he hates his own performance yeah. in this oh, movie. Oh, really? He okay. feels so out of place in this movie. Yeah. Like, he does not belong. And yeah, funny enough, he he yeah he doesn't like his performance, which I can get because he's he doesn't he doesn't love it, the choice of playing with many drivers' hair in silence for a while, <laughs> or pulling a Batman and fucking disappearing off the subway. I <laughs> laughed really hard at that. That's <laughs> actually him messing with her hair, like him kind of like not talking and just like that's I actually don't mind that. But yeah, then he does just fucking Batman away. And it makes no sense. I have what the fuck, comma, is he Batman in my notes. <laughs> I gotta say, though, speaking of hair, this movie's got a lot of gray hair in it because it does. Kevin Bacon with long hair, god damn, that is a good look on him. And then yeah. Billy Crudup with long hair, fucking, I even think Dustin Hoffman's like weird mullet that he's got going on. He kind of oh, fucking rocks cause it. Because <laughs> he looks like the Joker. Yes, yeah. he does. <laughs> yeah. Dude, if I shaved my beard right now, I would just look like Billy Crudup in this yeah, movie. And I'm yeah, considering it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got the dark circles under my eyes. Murder in my heart. <laughs> Two of the actors, I wish they had more to do in this movie. Jonathan yeah. Tucker and Billy Crudup. Yeah. I'm just, I was, I, I wrote down, I was like, man, they're not going to... They're not going to give either of these two things to do. They give right. all the other younger boys something to do. Jonathan Tucker has like two lines. Yeah. yeah. And it's a shame because I think he's such an underrated actor. I agree. I think uh, I think Ron Eldard has a really great moment when he sees Bacon in the bar. Oh, and oh. that's good. And he yep. goes into the bathroom and he splashes water on his face and then just kind of smiles because he's like, I fucking got him. Like, that is a great moment. Dude, he, he pulls off fucking the the sideburns and the handlebar mustache so fucking well yeah, yeah for sure him him especially when he's talking to billy crub too he's like take a good hard look at that guy yeah eating his dinner i was like this is actually a kind of a good scene yeah but then they ruin it with the them shooting him because it's awful yeah but i have a couple of notes about this scene so i'm kind of glad we're here yeah um first off they say oh they're the members of the west side boys gang <laughs> we never see any of the rest of this game no nope. <laughs> it's just them two it's i wonder if they them. were just them <laughs> it was just those two secondly i noticed this and I'm, i wonder if you guys too did you notice the product placement during this scene no because there's a lot of budweiser oh really like they're all drinking everyone's drinking budweiser and everything oh, like the guns they use i don't know what see i i was so distracted by the fact that everyone drinks their beer out of glasses in this movie like yeah. in the flashbacks and in present day people are pouring half a glass of beer and <laughs> drinking that always it th that bothers me in that scene kevin bacon pours beer into his glass yeah and then just goes back to eating yeah yeah he doesn't take a drink like jason patrick he, and mini driver do it later yeah. too. oh i gotta talk about the mini driver and jason patrick scene before we get there yes yes the, there's so much budweiser in this this one scene i'm like is budweiser the official beer of murdering pedophiles right yeah, yeah. i mean because yeah. i can kind of get on board with that idea <laughs> could you imagine that on their bottle yeah they should advertise <laughs> that for sure yeah yeah for sure yeah i have a i think i have a friend that still works at budweiser i'll bring it up next time i talk oh, to good, good. good thank you yeah, yeah. <laughs> the scene where they they jason patrick's outside mini driver's apartment and he's like oh do you want to come up and into her apartment for some reason yeah yeah <laughs> you want to come up and have a beer let's have a beer i i missed the line where he said to have a beer and then they cut to them you know cheering glasses yeah and i almost got so fucking furious at mally because i thought they were drinking milk, milk again <laughs> because there's look at this look how much head oh is yeah on the fucking beer <laughs> It's insane. That's just it's like it's two thirds head. It's all foam. <laughs> yeah. Also, this 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 screenshot kind of reminds me of something. Uh, uh, so many scenes in this are shot like a play. Yeah. Like people will walk out like with their shoulders broadened, ha delivering a line like they're like walking the proscenium, and then they will like mm -hmm. stand next to somebody cheating out, so both of them are facing the camera. Yep. Like, it's a very, it's, I don't know, the the blocking in some of these scenes is, is extremely weird. Yeah, agreed. I'm telling you, the direction in this movie is not, not good. There's not a, the writing's not good, the cinematography's not really great. Yeah. It, the editing's poor. Like I said, I really do think people were asleep at the will on this one. Yeah, it's very strange. <sighs> and it's funny you say all that, because I only feel most of that in the second half. Like, yeah. I think so too. I agree. It. It feels like the second half was directed by someone else. I wonder what the shooting schedule was. I wonder if they did all of the kid stuff first. Oh, maybe. And then did this stuff. Mm, I mean, it's very possible. Interesting. And that's but, why. But there's also this weird thing. Another another weird non sequitur scene is after 
after the scene with the scene with Carol, it cuts to Fat Mancho and he's just yells about what Hell's Kitchen is for a bit. Mm-hmm. Like we just cut to like his tight five and then the scene is over. Oh, you, he says you want money, you get a Jew. Yeah. yeah. And they just keep going the fuck on is he talking about? On. What was that scene? Dude, Did anytime we, that... he's talking, I'm like, what is he talking about? Right. Dude, I got to say, though, I kind of love all of his scenes. It's though. a good performance. <laughs> he's fucking hilarious. No, it's a, it's a really good performance, but but the 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 scenes are useless yeah. for, by and large oh, yeah agreed i like i i one of the few scenes in the back half that i like yeah. um is the, him and jason patrick playing handball yes yeah i like that like, too i like that little scene i thought that was weird it's kind of it not necessary <laughs> no and at then- all but jason patrick tries to make it a thing because he's like oh we normally play this sport in the summer or whatever i'm like who gives a shit keep right. going with the movie <laughs> i don't need the history of handball i got it <laughs> i would rather watch i would rather watch a movie about the history of handball than the second half of this yes. Do they play every single sport in this movie yeah i feel like they play every single sport in this movie they play handball they play basketball they play football they play stickball oh the last scene should have been them all just playing like foosball or ski ball that would have been amazing hockey (laughs) full full street hockey they walk into the restaurant just start playing air hockey dude can we cut back speaking of which my favorite scene of the movie has got to be this first stickball scene oh my god in the wheelchair shows up her like a command performance she might be the best part of this movie yeah. because you like that one guy there's two great the best trash talk i've ever seen there's two great lines in this movie and the first is that guy she you know she's heckling the guy at bat and that that larger dude just shouts you don't got any legs but you got a lot of tongue yeah wild <laughs> yeah oh i lost it but then not to be outdone and not for you to pity her. But she like she like dishes it back out. She says, What the fuck are you looking at, little dick? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. incredible. <laughs> I was like, God damn it, this is the best scene in this movie. I wanted that girl to come back so bad. Yeah, I kept <laughs> expecting for her to be a character later. And uh, but yeah. again, dude, if you just like if you just fucking like made a movie about growing up in Hell's Kitchen in the late sixties, I'd watch the fuck out of been that. Fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. Speaking of which, can I, can we I guess we can kind of gradually start moving towards the ending. We don't sure. have to start wrapping up, but I do have to say when they, you know, we talked about it, but when uh, Jason Patrick goes back to have dinner yeah. at his house and they're revealed that the mom's still there. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to pitch a better idea for this movie for the ending because the ending is kind of abrupt. Oh yeah. Um, like they do like have this nice dinner, but then he's like, Oh yeah, by the way, two of them are dead. Right. <laughs> or whatever. I, how much better would it have been if they're all out to dinner and shakes brought his mom to the dinner is like she's like oh or i i, I kind of wanted just the movie to end with her shooting the husband Jesus. <laughs> just for or no he, reason or he like completely he sets her up with danny snyder they're, they're all <laughs> celebrating and then shakes walks in he's like all right one down one to go they're like what they're like oh he, yeah my mom killed my dad we gotta do a whole other trial thing now oh no no no. <laughs> they go they're like yeah let's go do that they go to the apartment and she's already shot him in the face oh and he's just God. like slumped in the <laughs> That was a weird thing too when he's like, "Oh, one down," and I'm like, "Oh, you got? Is this gonna be the rest of the movie? They're gonna do like some Kill Bill shit where they gotta hunt down right. the rest of them?" And That's, then no, they just that is what the trailer would have you believe. The, yeah, well, uh, less entertaining. <laughs> yep. Um, freaking Jeffrey Donovan's death scene is intense. Holy where shit! Yeah, where he's like, he's got one of his eyes like bleeding, and then they they <laughs> just execute him at the airport. Oh, that was that they was great. Sh- uh, they don't execute; they shoot the fuck out yeah of they, they turned him into swiss, swiss cheese, cheese out of that dude <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um i gotta say uh, as crazy as the ending is yeah somehow ron elder he, he drank himself to death right and billy crudup got shot yeah and they're they're all not autopsy photos but they're they're like crime scene photos yeah. look exactly the same <laughs> yeah ron elder looks like he drank himself to death and then fell onto some bullets like yeah. it's a weird yes. the shot is is baffling because he's yeah. sort of like he's covered in blood and you're just like what yeah like oh and then yeah what? and then they zoom in on the bottle and i'm like wait no yeah. no that's not what happened he clearly got gunned the fuck down. yeah yeah oh man yeah, and everything comes full circle because uh they buy hot dogs at the end yeah uh, and they don't and they don't throw the they don't t- steal the cart oh dude even brad pitt ordering that hot dog felt out of like he was out of his own body yeah he's like relish oh it, uh, extra he was, relish. he was rehearsing for meet joe black <laughs> yeah it's so fucking bizarre 
It's so fucking bizarre. Um, before we actually get to the to the actual ending, I just want to speed through a few other little notes I had. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, this movie is a universal movie, and I gotta say, I'm sure you guys probably noticed this too. But what what point? I want to say it was probably like 2015, maybe. Uh huh. The universal um uh, like fanfare kind of added in like a harmony. Yeah. To the horn section, and I'm like. Oh yeah, it's, it's so much cooler that they did that now because uh-huh. this one starts off with the old school, just the regular horns. Yeah, and it's not as interesting. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, you know, a point of, <laughs> point to bring up. But also, okay, <laughs> this is something I love, and I don't know if you guys even know what I'm talking about. But do you guys know what gate weave is? Uh, what? Is that a, no. is that a hairstyle? Gate weave. So it's no, but oh. I mean it might be. But it's it's that slight subtle like shake that titles do on older movies like that way you know they were filmed and not oh, like just added yeah, okay, in yeah. through credits i have a, a, an obsession with gateweave titles uh-huh. for some reason i i wish we still did that i hate that we can just now go into fucking avid or after right. effects and just add in titles because it just looks so much cooler it looks so much more authentic you know what i mean i agree um i'm glad this movie still was using it even up to the 90s because this is right before digital really takes off you know mm-hmm. yeah ron eldard stars in a movie called diggers yes and, and i can't think of any movie i'd rather star in less than one with that title. there's uh <laughs> there's a story that was it ken marino oh, no yeah. uh, oh, no, no no paul rudd told this story on i think i want to say conan o'brien or or maybe comedy bang bang he, anyway he was telling a story about doing this movie and you know they were shooting out on an island mm-hmm. uh, they're all playing clam diggers they were and this this boat came by really loud and the guys were yelling like what movie are you oh yeah it was ken marino ken marino and paul rudd what movie are you doing and they yelled back, oh no diggers oh and everyone on the no. boat just kind of oh. like looked away and like drove off <laughs> like it's insane dude i'm just i'm imagining in my mind yeah like when that movie was coming Absurd. out the marketing the the bus stop ads that got graffiti yeah or the billboards and i'm just like no you got who in the marketing department was not like there's some red flags I think here maybe fellas. that's why this thing went direct to digital and dvd oh yeah <laughs> yeah it makes a lot of sense isn't fucking sarah paulson in that movie she is oh, yeah I, I never even heard of that movie i just happened to look it up his filmography sarah paulson lauren ambrose yeah it's got a good cast i never got around to seeing it yeah. i think one of the last thing I want to talk about before we get to the ending, sure, is um, you know, I like I said, we try not to talk about these movies before we record the episodes to get the genuine <laughs> reaction. But <laughs> I was at the scene where Kevin Bacon and the other guards first take the kids oh, to that yeah underground. So park. hard to watch, uh, oh, yeah. No. But when that one actor, the one of the kids says, "What do you want?" Yes, and Kevin Bacon takes a puff of a cigarette. Oh, I knew it says a blowjob. Oh. I had to. I paused the movie. I whipped out my phone and I was. I texted the group and I was like, "Come the fuck on <laughs> with this movie." Yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Like, there's no, there's no subtlety. There's no nuance. Like, it's just none. It's just characters. It's just monsters saying what they want. like. Cut that line, yeah, and and you're good. You're golden, and <laughs> like that's what I was like because I felt bad because I was laughing throughout this whole movie. And I'm like, this sure. is obviously not something to laugh at. But oh, of course, I'm laughing at the poor meta ness of it, the poor direction, and yeah. The, do you, Kevin Bacon had I I have to believe that he, filming that scene, the first take, he had to have turned to Barry Levinson and be like. Wouldn't it be better if I just don't? Yeah, wouldn't it be better if I just took a drag of the cigarette and you cut? Yeah. Like, I have to think that was a thing. Yeah. Yeah, like, you, he takes the drag of the cigarette and then you cut to, like, fucking, like, the the empty hallway. Like, or, yeah, like, the fucking, like, coming, like, dolly out of the fucking room with, like, the kids, like, fucking screaming and shit. It's like, yeah. Effective. You're done. Yeah. And and terrifying. And yeah, there's, there's several lines like that where, they don't trust the audience to know what's going on. Like there's a bit where Brad Pitt is going through his files and he's like, yeah, Addison still has the same sexual proclivities. And then he describes in detail what he likes to do. And I'm yep, just like, yeah. you don't have to do that. Like it, it would, uh, it would be like if uh fucking what's his name in Jaws, the main actor. Uh, uh, God damn it. I'm uh, Roy Scheider. Yes. When he's, 
throwing the chum in the we're water. We're going to need a bigger boat because the shark is fucking big. <laughs> that's, that's, better, that's better than what I was going to say. I was going to be like, if it, I was going to say it'd be like if Bruce leaps out of the water and they show that reaction shot and then they cut back to Bruce and he's like, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> right. But yours is, yours is better. Right. But no, yeah, it's like, it is, it's just like, Fucking, there's no, there's no elegance to like most of the dialogue in this movie, which no. which works for some characters, but sometimes I'm just like, especially when you're dealing with like traumatic, triggering stuff, yeah. like less is more. I think less is so much more. Well, and like here's the thing, like all right, you take this movie, you cut out, you cut four seconds off the end of basically every scene. Yep. And then you also, because I'm about to save you 20 minutes on the movie right here. Oh, yes. You, yeah, let's cut, do this you, too. you cut out every transition shot of a fucking subway train or a skyline. Yeah, sure. 20 yeah. minutes. You're at two hours immediately. Or a basketball court or a sidewalk where nothing's happening. Yeah, it's just like, like I get that you want to make Hell's Kitchen a character, but right. God, every it's scene. It's really not either. Every transition is like a shot of a building or a right. yeah. train or something. It's like, if I, oh my God, those fucking subway trains are triggering for me at this point. Yeah. <laughs> like, cut that shit out. You just, boom, you got two hours, done. Was there, um, and this this could just be me overthinking it, but is there possibly a subtle nod to Dog Day Afternoon? Because when... Um, Robert De Niro goes to to meet Shakes, whatever, and he says, "Oh, I stopped by Attica to see an old friend of mine." I was like, "Is he making a subtle reference to Al Pacino in Dog Day Afternoon?" <laughs> because that would make sense. They're both friends. He right. was in Dog Day Afternoon. He was at you know they talked about Attica. I was like, "Who knows? Maybe that's a little cheekiness. It could be, but I I don't want to give this movie that much credit." <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, so. I'm gonna I'm gonna 100 say no. <laughs> Probably not. Um, well, Mally, this is your pick. Can you please uh, summarize the ending for us as uh, a little recap? Okay. So after the fucking bamboozle of a fucking trial that makes no goddamn this sense. kangaroo court bullshit. John and Tommy are found not guilty. They are. Somehow. Yeah. Some fucking how. Because the priest said so. Oh, God. Yeah. And priest won't and he lie. Had stubs. And it's like, did they not like... Is it not weird that, like, they never mentioned, like, we couldn't have killed them. We were at a basketball game. Like, really? That never came up before fucking now? No, because they lost their ability to talk for an hour and a half of screen time. That's right. That's right. Yeah, how that's did they right. not get caught up to the stand at all? Yeah. I mean, I know it was a rigged fucking Ugh. trial anyway, but Jesus Christ. Yeah, so strange. This judge is a moron. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> So stupid. I don't know why that that really tickled me. When he calls Brad Pitt up and he's like, "Oh, your character went just blowing up in your fucking face." <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck is that?" That is actually one of my favorite line deliveries Brad Pitt has is when he calls him up and he goes, uh, "I I don't know, Your Honor. I guess I I called the wrong uh, I called the wrong witness." <laughs> no, no shit, Brad. Also, there's a whole reveal of a. Uh, sexual abuse ring that happened here that just gets swept right. under the rock the judge the judge is basically like we might arrest you later like yeah he says uh, i would leave your home because people are going to want to talk to you but, but as far as what? we can tell from shakes's closing narration uh no one sees time for it it's it's insane yeah sorry Mally, i just had to get that out but please continue no no you're good because all that's accurate <laughs> um so like it's I don't know. It's kind of play like I'm kind of surprised Dustin didn't text be like, dude, this movie doesn't fit the podcast. It uh -huh. almost didn't. But then the, it, the actual ending happens and I got it. I was like, OK, like it like it kind of like because it's played as sub as such a triumphant like we won. Yay. With like this. Well, yeah. And the music is like music. Yeah. I mean, the final da -da -da. shot yeah. is them, like, running out the building in slow motion on each other's shoulders with a trophy. Yeah. What's the trophy even for? Did I miss something? Did they win for their, uh, for their little acapella group? Yeah, is that what they got their it, trophy yeah, for? Yeah, because okay. they... Also, was that even a thing before the restaurant nope. scene? Oh, my God. We were never clued in on that, I don't believe. Uh, at the very, very, very beginning. Really? You see shots of them, like dancing and rehearsing it i fully but you that. don't you don't know what the fuck the point of those shots are until oh. the final scene but that's Good what it story is telling. i didn't know acapella groups required dance routines apparently <laughs> um but so like they're all like celebrating like we won like oh yeah. we got away with it blah blah and then it's like 
Yep, we got away with it, but that was the last time we ever saw each other because this one drank himself to death. Right. This one got murdered. This one said fuck off and moved to England. Right. He became a carpenter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. strangely and never married and he became jesus and carol maybe had john's kid man she so she was with she was with uh michael when they were kids then right. she was with tommy they mentioned she was with tommy for a bit and then got married to john right she so loves stephen king because like that's a thing that is weirdly not really addressed yeah like it's mentioned yeah. right when you first meet adult john and then at the end she's like oh my husband and kisses him you're like oh yeah they're married what right oh dude this this ending is i, I literally wrote down whenever he started recapping like oh here's where everybody's at right now i was like what is this stand by me bullshit <laughs> it's so fucking terrible like that's exactly what i thought too you know what would have been funnier mm -hmm. and for the characters more genuine but like when they're showing going around the table and and he's telling you what happened and showing you photos and stuff I would laugh so much harder if it would have just been text on the screen, like that faded up, and it was like this one uh, got murdered. Oh, <laughs> oh, like Fast Times at Richmond. Yeah, I like, hardly, <laughs> can't hardly wait. Yeah, I would have laughed so much harder at that. But yeah, that's that's the thing. This movie does want you to feel like it's this triumphant ending, but then they're like, oh yeah, two of them are fucking dead. We're not friends anymore with the other two. One of them never married, and it's well, like, it's like, yay. and they also <laughs> leave out like what happened to Father Bobby. Like, right? Yes. Yeah. Like, he, what the fuck's going on there? Nobody like, cares. I fucking care. That's all I want to know about. You know what even better? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix this ending right now. First of all, you do what I said. You do the text fading up instead of the narration. Yeah. And then the, the last one before you cut to them running up the school or whatever in slow-mo, as you show a smoking barrel of a gun. Jesus And then you follow Christ. that to, a, to the hand holding it all the way up. It's the mom. And it shakes his mob. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it shakes his mob. Uh, was the second trial they had to cover up because she murdered. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so we we like tilt up to reveal her having just killed her husband. Mm -hmm. She grabs a suitcase, walks downstairs. Who's waiting in a fucking dope out, d fucking dope ass Cadillac? Dust it off, man. <laughs> no, I was gonna say Bobby De Niro. <laughs> oh, even better. <laughs> she even gets better. in. They fucking cruise off into the sunlight. We're not even fucking covering it on this podcast. Ooh, nice. ooh, ooh, no, no, no. So he gets in the car with her, right? Mm -hmm. They drive off. Cut to they have a kid a few years later, a little girl, uh -huh. a little Dakota Fanning. Oh God! And then the mom dies. We're we're in hide and seek, oh, baby. Oh no! <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no! That's the ending question mark. And they got away with covering up a murder trial right and then a bunch of them died and they never spoke again. <laughs> it's such a weird ending. It's very yeah. bizarre. Um, is there any other little things that we forgot to talk about or any, any other little notes you guys want to cover before we get into the... Who fucking cares? Yeah. Uh, there's one great line that I, I wanted to spotlight. Oh, please. It's, uh, whenever, uh, Jason Patrick's meeting with the, his, his contact and he goes, did you ever think about becoming a cop? And he goes, what, and leave the good guys? Oh, yeah. That's a good line. That's pretty... It's a yeah. good line. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's cheeky. Which also, wait, real quick, where did he get, where, where did they get that fucking gun? Who I knows? was wondering that, I think from King Benny's people, like, but yeah, there's, all of a sudden he's doing, like, Ethan Hunt level surveillance. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh god, the photos he gives them, crystal clear. Yeah. Like, amazing high def photos. <laughs> we missed out on having Jason Patrick play the Punisher. Mm. Did we? <laughs> no, I'm we good. didn't. Um, we didn't really get to talk about it that much, but Minnie Driver is great in this movie. She's really good. Really good. Fucking swoon as well. She's she's so great. Beautiful in this movie too. Yeah. Um, doesn't get enough to do, but for some reason, this like I said, this guy loves Stephen King, who mm -hmm. also just leaves women around to do nothing. So <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, why don't we get into the fun stuff now that we've got all that grossness off of us? Let's talk about Prop Cop. And I'm gonna go ahead and ban anybody saying you can take kevin bacon's baton or the rosary beads oh or yeah i wasn't gonna make <laughs> any terrible jokes like dustin that, I, I don't think any of us were gonna oh, no. do just that just precaution just as a precaution yeah but, no that's fair that's fair um Mally, this is your movie i'll grant you uh first pick uh i'm gonna go with the clacker and then go fuck with a bunch of nuns <laughs> nice <laughs> uh, that's nice uh nathan uh i want one of those hot dogs from the end of the movie <laughs> 
<laughs> you're just hungry i am but like for some reason somehow a hot dog did sound really good yeah right? it Watch did this movie. after the after a long day at my rigged trial i love a hot dog <laughs> um i can't think of what it's called i know there's a name for it but oh I know I just, it just came to me. Okay. The little miniature diorama of the pub they use at the trial. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. It's yes. got like one quick shot and it's very detailed. Yeah. I was like, that's kind of fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I want that. All right. Those are all good picks. Um, Way yeah. to go us. I don't have a stinger for this, but what about bit part? Oh, yeah. There's a lot to pick from in this movie. This is for, um, you know, I forgot to talk about for new listeners. This is... um. An extra character in the movie, like not a big name actor or like a named character, really, but just a small part that mm-hmm. you would like to a, star a, in. A, B, a BG artist. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Nathan, you, you seem to have one locked oh, yeah. and loaded. Oh, yeah. I hope you don't take mine, but I have a feeling you I might. I want to be one of the Republican guys at the bar. Oh, <laughs> Damn it, okay, that was God. mine. <laughs> Hey, well, there's two. You guys can do it. Fuck it. Yeah, me and Nathan are the Republicans in the bar. I, it's it's very much like they had the same energy as the uh, the Texas dudes from Jurassic World at the auction. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very much so. You guys missed the obvious fucking choice here. Oh, no. It's the hot dog cart guy that gets killed by <laughs> 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 you get it. You get an odd screen death. Yeah. You don't have to worry about any lines. That's good. And you get killed by a fucking hot dog car. That's true. <laughs> so that's my pick. All right, noted. That's how Dustin wants to that's how Dustin wants to go that's out. That's how I want to go out. That's how I want to go out. All right, noted. I'm gonna remember that here in a few years. <laughs> I got big plans, guys. My revenge for Jurassic World is ongoing <laughs> my other pick was gonna be one of the jurors but the nah, hot dog cart guy yeah. is the way to go yeah no hot dog cart death guy is definitely a better choice that's excellent yeah for sure um well gentlemen the whole reason we're here um uh, sleepers has a very strange ending yeah uh but it is somewhat of a bummer so why don't we try and fix that by coming up with our silver linings mm-hmm who would like to go first? Not me. Uh, I'll go. Um, okay. I think it's great that they had, I mean, as, as, as you know, th- even though it's uh, bizarre that they never cross paths again, I think it's great that they had that one last fun night at the bar. Yeah, okay, at the restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you are going to, you know, have a friend group break up. Yeah. They usually tend to break up gradually over time. Sure. But for them to like be like, and that was the last time we ever spoke or saw each other. That <laughs> After is... we sang together and got drinks, all of a sudden we were just like, it is kind of yeah. poetic. Yes, I mean it's strange that all of you would just decide we're not talking to each other anymore. <laughs> it's like a hard stance. Mm-hmm. It's very weird. Um, well, I'm gonna take the kind of obvious one because it's the one that I actually did feel good about. Uh, they broke down a fucking pedophile ring. <laughs> yeah. So. Either through death or through the judicial system, everybody kind of got what was coming to them. Right. Which is strange because even the two quote unquote good guys on our side, Ron Eldred and Billy Crota, did get taken out. I mean, they were kind of bad guys and yeah. they ended up dying. So really, all the bad people got taken out. So um, mine's kind of related, um, kind of jumping off from Dustin's. Uh-huh. Um, they got to shoot their rapist in the fucking dick. Hell yeah. Yes, I'm sure that was very cathartic. Hell yeah. And God damn it, if you don't fist pump when that happens, you can GTFO. No, Kevin, it's it's not a great filmed scene, but it is like on from a writing standpoint, you're like, oh thank God. Yeah. Yes. Like, Kevin Bacon got his yeah. come up and oh. for sure. All right. I think that was all really well, you know, executed there, fellas. Yeah. Um now why don't we talk about a double feature uh pick here. And now this is uh for new listeners, this is where we pitch you the idea of having a double feature with sleepers and our other pick here. Um it's kind of a way to be like, look, sleepers might bring you a bit down. You need to be re-energized and brought back up. So we're going to pick you the best double feature possible mm-hmm. to watch back to back with. So, Mally, do you have a, an idea of what you want to do as a double feature? I, I do. And I know usually we kind of try to tie it into the movie. But uh-huh. for some fucking reason, like literally the credits on this were rolling when I watched it on Friday night. Uh-huh. And out of nowhere, I was like, you know what? Yep. And I put on... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, oh. The Secret of Secret the Ooze. Of the Ooze. Wow. Fuck yeah. And I was like, let's fucking go. <laughs> wow. And god damn it, it was effective. That's a great yeah. movie. Ninja, ninja, rap. Yeah. Indeed. Um, Nathan? 
I'm sorry. I'm just like, I'm just shocked about like by that double feature. I'm trying to think of any like connective There's, tissue. <laughs> it's incredible. That's a great choice. They're both in New York. Both in New York, baby. There you go. Go ninja. Go ninja. Go. Uh, Michelangelo fights someone with a hot dog. And he does the combat cold <laughs> yes, cuts. He does. Michelangelo also painted the Sistine Chapel. That's so right. There you go. <laughs> That's your connection. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, there you go. That movie's way more conducted now than you think about it. Right. <laughs> yeah, fuck. It it seemed random when I thought of it, but damn. <laughs> the uh no, it's funny. We we talked about it a little bit earlier. Just, you know, the this this particular author's vibe and parallels, but my double feature would be Stand By Me because okay. it's uh it's got the it's got the energy of the first 20 minutes of the movie. But uh, with the, I think, I mean, uh, still kind of a bummer by the end, but it's a, it's a classic. Okay. I'm, I haven't rewatched him, I mean, in a while, but I have to assume it probably holds up well. Yeah. I'm so nervous for Dustin's pick. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, my pick is one you're going to love. Um, we've talked about it a lot in this episode, but Kevin Bacon is not right for this movie, or at least his character is not yeah. great. He's not giving a great performance. Uh, but Kevin Bacon is capable of doing great work in Tremors. Exactly. I pick Tremors <laughs> oh. because. Oh my God! Fuck. <laughs> when he's at the yes. at the pub eating, yeah, he's got his long hair and everything. I'm like, God damn it, Kevin Bacon with long he hair like is Val. fucking great. Yeah. And I'm like him with the cowboy hat and the sleeveless shirt in fucking Tremors. It's fucking a, such a good look for him. It's a great and Tremors look. is fun as shit. It, it, it does not get the Tremor, dude. The first Tremors is amazing. It does yeah. not get the respect it deserves because it's the second one's really fun too. Yeah, yeah, very, very different tonally. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well, I think I know where this answer is going to go. But uh, do you guys recommend Sleepers? Uh, nah. Okay, easy enough. I, I didn't enjoy. I I didn't enjoy watching this. Not at all. <laughs> I. Uh, or not even I mean I, of course you're not supposed to enjoy enjoy that you know this movie but I yeah I I, I just the, the 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 good parts of this don't stand out to me enough to to recommend a watch sure uh Mally? uh situational actually um because okay. I I know people that really like this movie like I don't who call them out <laughs> my mother okay huh. uh-huh say something Dustin. All right. keep going <laughs> okay um no like there are some people that really dig like these like 90s courtroom dramas and i know people that really like this movie and yeah. i don't i don't see you keep hate... saying courtroom drama i don't know if i put this in that category it, it is um like i don't hate <sighs> this movie but i don't it doesn't live up to its premise yeah yeah premise yeah. premise was the word i was looking for mm-hmm um so yeah it's it's like i wouldn't recommend this to like everyone i know but like there's sure. certain people where i'm like yeah they would if probably this dig like this their, maybe yeah or actually i will recommend this movie to everyone if you buy the dvd and don't <laughs> flip it over <laughs> okay that, i mean it's a solid movie at least there like you just don't flip that bitch over and you're good i will give you that the first half first half way better um I gotta say, I, I've never done this before. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a movie, obviously, I had not seen until this this episode. Um, halfway through the movie, I wrote down, I'm only halfway through it, and as I write this, I cannot recommend this movie on any level. <laughs> yeah. So before even finishing it, I knew I was Me not too. gonna be able to recommend it. So, like Nathan said, there's like little bits and pieces of this movie that are good, but nothing substantial. There's not even a full scene that I can think of that is like this is the best part of the movie like there's right good moments like i said i think that stickball scene is very funny yeah but as a whole no i can't recommend it and that's all any other thoughts fellas before we get out of here nope oh no i need a i feel like i need a shower and uh I definitely and not only because this movie's dirty but because it's, because fucking it's hot, hot as fuck yeah, yeah. It's, it's really fucking, fucking hot. hot i'm sweating yeah. <sighs> um well uh Listener, if you've seen Sleepers and you have a different opinion than we do, please let us know about it. Mm -hmm. You can uh, either email us at the Silver Linings Playlist at gmail.com or you can DM us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings Playlist. And feedback is uh, of quality, of a certain quality. We'll read it on air next week and we'll discuss it. So uh, feel free to send that information (laughs) into us. I'll try. I mean, if we get some good feedback, I'll read it. Yeah. Why not? I'm, I'm, you know, Jurassic World. We talked about this. I cannot be convinced that's a good movie. Right. Sleepers. I still feel that way, but you might be able to convince me. Sure. Maybe. Maybe. 
Um, please, again, if you haven't already, the the usual podcast roundup here, please subscribe, rate, and leave feedback if you don't mind. Tell us, yeah. tell your friends about us, uh, tell your coworkers, tell your enemies, <laughs> tell everyone you know about us. Um, tell your prison guard if you're listening to this in jail. Um, oh, God. Don't. Mm -mm. (laughs) Mm -mm. Um, I will say before we get into our clue for next week, a Mm -hmm. little announcement. Uh, As we're recording this, this is our five year anniversary for the show. Oh, yeah. Congrats, guys. Yeah, incredible. Fuck you, Uh, Nathan. Okay. You weren't (laughs) here. I said congrats congrats to you guys. guys. You ain't put in the work. Jeez. Uh, But yeah, no, it's an incredible longevity this show has had that I did not think it would. Oh, yeah. When we were recording episode three, I was like, "Ah, we're still fucking doing this. (laughs) Uh, And what better way uh, to celebrate than also with the announcement that we recently crossed 10,000 downloads. So... Which is crazy because it's also a higher number than that. Nathan? <laughs> because we swap podcast hosts through at like middle of season two. So it's actually more than that. But that's it's now official that we've crossed that threshold. So thank you so much, listener. That's incredible. For for three white dudes that are straight that have nothing to contribute to the culture. Uh, <laughs> we, we, I, that's amazing that uh, that many people give enough of a shit. Uh, yeah. So thank you, listener. Um, now, uh, Nathan. Yeah. Next week, your pick. Yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah. Um, because I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little clue myself. Okay. This is somehow a, a crossover movie for two franchises that we somehow have not covered any of the entries yeah. for on our show. So we're kind of breaking ground in two different franchises next week. So mm-hmm. please, can you give us the clue for next week? I'm very excited. Next week. Place your bets. <laughs> God damn it. Whoever wins, we lose. <laughs> uh, the, next week is going to be so much fun. We have uh, hopefully... I cannot schedules wait. Schedules permitting. We have two guests returning that I yeah. cannot wait to hear what they have to say. It, m- it might take the cake for our most chaotic episode. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be insane if it turns out that way. Uh, so, uh, recipes, oatmeal, mm-hmm. and uh, as always, Excelsior. My revenge will persist. <laughs> I'm so happy you did that song because I was thinking about it, <laughs> but I didn't. Excelsior! 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 Oh, look at us! Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, Anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters!